Hello, welcome to our summer and spring preview. My name is Alonzo Fuller and I, along with my colleagues, are excited to share what's coming in 2023. Just a couple of things before we get started. First, if you have any questions during the presentation, please leave them in the Q&A icon and we will answer as quickly as we can. Second, if you wish to access our preview again or share it, we will send a link to you after the presentation concludes. You can also find it on our website, ampkids.com. Okay, now back to the preview. Along with a sneak peek at our upcoming titles, you'll also hear from eight creators talking about their new books. Andrea Towers, Steens, Dustin Brady, just to name a few. Our 30-minute presentation covers 26 books and will be broken up into three parts. Brand new, read to do and read to know, and next in the series, where you don't want to miss the next Big Nate and Phoebe and her unicorn. And now, enjoy the show. From best-selling author Dustin Brady comes a new illustrated novel series, perfect for fans who love funny, unexpected adventures and wacky plot twists. Hear more about World's Worst Time Machine from the author himself. Hey, what's up? My name is Dustin Brady, and I want to tell you about my favorite idea I've ever had for a book. It's about this kid named Liam who goes to a garage sale, finds a box full of junk labeled with four words, World's Worst Time Machine. It's only $3 which is an amazing price for a time machine, even if it is the worst. So Liam brings it home, puts the whole thing together with duct tape and those little twist ties you get with loaves of bread, and, uh, and it works, it's amazing. And so he decides to bring back Thomas Edison to help him with his book report that's due the next day. There's only one problem. This is the worst time machine. And so it brings back the wrong Thomas Edison. It brings back a kid from the 1930s who wants to be a gangster. This Thomas Edison would really prefer it if you call him Tommy Twinkles, and Tommy Twinkles causes chaos wherever he goes. This is a really fun one that I'm most excited about because I have a heart for reluctant readers. Um, I really want to reach kids who don't think that they like reading because they've never found a book that's connected with them. This one was really written with them in mind. Uh, it's filled with tons of short chapters uh, with a cliffhanger at the end of every chapter. It's got a lot of heart and, and, and humor in it, but also lots of twists and turns, almost kind of daring those kids to keep reading to finish the book. I wanted to thank you uh, for helping introduce kids to their favorite book. I hope this is it. Uh, it comes out on April 25th, and I'm so excited for kids to start reading it. From author Andrea Towers comes a brand new illustrated novel series about a friend group of girls who love video gaming. Volume 1, Gamer Girls, Nat vs. Spider, releases on the 31st of January, and you can hear all about this new series directly from the author. I am so excited about Gamer Girls. Uh, this is the book I wish I had when I was growing up. It means a lot to me that it's going to be out there in the world and so many people are going to be able to read it, to get to know and love the characters, not just uh, kids who are in the demographic of middle age, but maybe parents or adults like me, or maybe even a little bit younger kids who have experience with gaming. And don't forget to check out book two of the Gamer Girls series, Monster Village, ready for readers to press start on May 9th. In this one, the focus has shifted to Natalie's friend Celia, the artsy and creative one of the group. She isn't quite as fond of action-packed battle royales like her friends enjoy, but she soon falls in love with a cozy game called Monster Village, where she can let her creativity shine. This seems all well and good until cracks begin forming in the girls' gaming club due to their differences in gaming preferences. Will the gamers be able to find common ground or will their new club be doomed? Find out in Gamer Girls Volume 2. Foxes on the run? A crabby cat out for revenge? Read all about it in Grimwood, a new chapter book series by Nadia Shireen, publishing May 30th. Ted and Nancy are brother and sister fox cubs, and they're being chased by Princess Buttons, the scariest street cat in the big city. Running for their lives, the pair heads for Grimwood, a peaceful town in the countryside. 
The only problem, Grimwood is actually not peaceful, not at all. Instead, Ted and Nancy bump into thieving eagles, dramatic ducks, riotous rabbits, and a whole host of unusual characters. Grimwood is, well, weird. But when Princess Buttons tracks them down, they have no choice but to unite with these other animals in a mind-bending race against time. Dynamically illustrated, Grimwood also stands out for its wonderful laugh-out-loud humor. I mean, come on, it's narrated by a bus-driving cockroach named Eric. And along with the laughs and the outrageous critters, Grimwood is a heartwarming story about home and belonging. Publishing June 27th is a new illustrated novel from Sir Lenny Henry, The Boy with Wings. This superhero story tells the tale of Tunde, an average kid who's given extraordinary power. When Tunde unexpectedly sprouts wings on his 12th birthday, the stakes keep raising higher as he learns that he may be all that stands in the way between Earth and total destruction. Together with a ragtag group of friends, Tunde must fly on to become a hero and save the world. He's the boy with wings, and this is his destiny. No pressure, right? Next up, Nell and the Netherbeast, created by Addie Rule. This is a middle grade chapter book coming out August 15th. The Netherbeast is a slinking creature with an overwhelming stench. So it seems impossible that it could charm a 12 year old girl named Nell. However, Nell loves animals, so she makes friends with this shapeshifter and is propelled into an unforgettable summer. A summer at her aunt's bed and breakfast with a strange beast, a haunting, a fire, and a basement that should be avoided at all costs. We're really excited about this book because who doesn't love a mysterious cat-like creature with a penchant for hilarious hijinks? but it's the nether beast hijinks that make Nell question if she's made a new best friend or an enemy who is out to destroy Aunt Jerry's B&B. Nell's adventure, one that she did not ask for, is full of mystery and mischief, making this a page turner that is equally heart pounding and heartwarming. Nancy Wins at Friendship comes out May 16th. It's the first middle grade collection of Nancy comics since Olivia James took over as the official cartoonist in 2018. Olivia is the first woman to write and illustrate the classic comic and brings a fresh, irreverent vision which has earned praise from the New York Times, the Washington Post, NPR, Slate, and readers all across the internet. This graphic novel for ages 8 to 12 follows Nancy as she begins settling back into life after the global pandemic. With her friends Agnes, Lucy, Esther, and of course Sluggo at her side, Nancy takes on the daily challenges of a young girl in the 21st century, from competing as a member of her school robotics team, to clashing with Sluggo in a prank war, and driving Aunt Fritzy up a wall. By highlighting one girl's resilience, this collection of Nancy comics provides a funny, light-hearted look at the daily challenges and small delights experienced by kids everywhere in recent years. Peculiar Woods is a new middle grade graphic novel series by Andres Colmenares, publishing May 23rd. In volume one, The Ancient Underwater City, we meet a lonely nine-year-old boy named Iggy. He's a new kid in town, which can be a scary experience, and especially so if your belongings start coming to life. You see, on his first night in this strange town, Iggy gets lost in the woods and discovers he can talk to objects and they'll respond. There's his cozy blanket named Faye, a chair named Boris who tells Iggy that he's into yoga, and a pair of spirited chess pieces. This gang sets out on an epic quest to sort themselves out. And along the way, they encounter the nefarious washing machine, Lazarus Gallington, who pulls them further into the mystery of the flooded town. Peculiar Woods, with its enchanting story and artwork, is reminiscent of The Brave Little Toaster and Adventure Time. It's a whimsical and thrilling new series where Iggy and his unlikely band of heroes will capture the minds and hearts of young readers as the characters adventure into mystery, overcome adversity, and discover the importance of true friendship. Oh, 
They also tried to save the entire village before it's too late. A noob's diary of an 8-bit warrior is an all-new Minecraft adventure series for young readers from best-selling author Cube Kid. Book 1 publishes July 25th. This new series combines the stories and characters of the novel series with the artwork style of the graphic novels. It's the best of both in a brand new Minecraft format for readers ages 7 to 9. In Book 1, Villager Runt longs to be a warrior. He's uninterested in carrot culture and definitely doesn't care for trade. When he decides to leave home and pursue his dream, Runt meets Blurp, a zombie who longs to be human. Together, the unlikely pair form a bond and set out to prove themselves to the world. Kids are going to love reading about Runt's adventures in the world of Minecraftia as it resonates with their own love for the extremely popular video game. And parents and teachers will love it because it's an easy way to break kids away from the screen and into a book. Memes and Thiefs is a new graphic novel series for middle grade readers created by Liza N. Cooper. Volume 1, Ferrets from the Planet Ferritonia, comes out July 25th. This is where we meet Memes and Thiefs, two ferrets from the planet Ferritonia who long for adventure. So they build a travel opal using forbidden technology, but their secret experiment goes haywire and they end up crash landing on Earth. Clever Memes and his goofy brother Fiefs are now stuck with no way to return to their planet. So they make the best of their situation and pop into an animal shelter where they meet a shy teenage girl named Liza. Now, because Memes is tech savvy, the ferrets are able to communicate with Liza and letting her know that they need to get back to their own planet and fast. These three form a bond that hurdles them all into a race against time adventure. Will they make it home or are they doomed to stay on earth forever? This hilarious heartwarming series will totally delight kids and the millions and millions of ferret fans found on Instagram, TikTok, and in homes across the nation. Finally, ferrets get their time to shine. On May 30th, four months past Florence, an all new YA novel and verse will release from up and coming poet, Emily Page Wilson. Over the past 10 years, Emily has won over 25 prestigious poetry awards while completing her MFA in poetry. Here to talk about her new novel is Emily herself. This book was inspired by some of the experiences that I had and some of my closest friends had while living in Wilmington, North Carolina during Hurricane Florence. This book explores themes of climate change, government and community responsibility, and also how do you start to become a change agent as a young person when you're still figuring out your own self and your own beliefs, especially in the world of social media. At its true heart, it is a book about friendship, and I am so excited to share this cast of characters with you. Four Months Past Florence follows the students who work at their high school newspaper. Our protagonist, Millie, is headstrong. She is opportunistic. If Lola's son was the character that stood out the most to me in the writing process, the scene that stood out the most to me is when Millie and her mom, who have escaped, they've evacuated from their hometown in light of the approaching storm, they try to make their way back for the first time and they find themselves trapped in traffic on the interstate when they notice a storm surge approaching. This huge rush of water is approaching their vehicle. I still remember the sense of claustrophobia I felt when crafting the scene. I hope it's really palpable on the page. If you want to know if Millie and her mom get out of that predicament, you'll have to read four months past Florence yourself to find out. Bracketivity came out earlier this month, and it's an all-new activity book series where kids select their favorites within various categories to determine an ultimate winner. Yes, this is an activity book with fill-in-the-blank prompts, but we love it so much, we just had to share it because kids are having a lot of fun with the various Bracketivity themes, including favorite wild animal, ice cream flavor, animated movie, and school field trip. But also, we discovered that real magic happens when the book is shared. Asking the prompts out loud sparks a natural, funny chit-chat where everyone learns something new about each other. We've road tested it, 
at the dinner table, in the classroom, and from the back seat of the car, and it's a hit. Friends and families, students and teachers are getting to know each other in a new, fun, and engaging way. Check it out. From writer Megan Wagner Lloyd comes an all new book sure to inspire kids to get creative themselves. The Creative Writing Playbook for Kids Only publishes on June 13. This super fun guided activity book features plenty of helpful tips on how to hone one's creativity and become a fantastic writer in a variety of mediums. Narrated by the creativity creature, a creature that lives inside every kid, this book teaches readers how to build character arcs, draw story scenes, create a plot pyramid, name characters, and much, much more. A perfect title for aspiring writers, graphic novel creators, screenwriters, you name it. 150 Happy Facts by The Happy Broadcast comes out March 7th. This is a collection of real stories about positive happenings in the world. The project was designed to instill a sense of optimism, relief, and joy in kids, and really in everyone. Creators Moro Gotti and Keith Bonici are here to tell you more about their project and this terrific book. Uh, to me, why this one is meaningful is because I got to work on this book with my good friend and partner, Mauro, as well as my oldest son, Luca, who helped um, put together some of the selections of the facts that we put into this book. Um, you know, to be able to have something like this that has a bright, visual, happy illustration and some positive news to jumpstart my day is something that... Um, that I'm excited about, and I, I can't wait to share it with um, the rest of the world and and uh, the the many kids that it's intended for. So that's why I'm I'm most excited about it. Mara, what do you think? What, what's making you excited about it? To me, like editorial projects were always like a priority because of the format, you know, the illustration, the text, uh, and I feel like that there is like some power in giving something to someone. You know, kindness is also like sharing something that is gonna make someone else happy. And I feel like that the book uh, is going to be like a great collection of like positive news and information that are definitely going to cheer up, you know, someone else because we all love social media, but there is like something that is like unique about like holding uh, like a piece of like happiness in, in your hands. Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed once at making a light bulb. I have simply found 99 ways of not making one. And when everything went wrong, Readers will meet Edison and other inventors who shared one important thing in common. Each persevered. Making mistakes doesn't mean you failed. It's all part of the process. Along with Edison, there's also Margaret Steiff, who invented the teddy bear, and Jan Ertz Matzleger, whose invention was a great step forward for the shoe industry. And of course, many, many more. We love this book because of the variety of inventions and their inventors. The pages are filled with fun facts and true stories in both prose and comic form, all told in a way that gives young readers confidence to try, try, try. Now that's a light bulb moment. Check out When Everything Went Wrong on May 2nd. Dana Simpson continues the adventures of Phoebe and her unicorn with punk rock unicorn galloping in on April 4th. To hear it from the unicorn's mouth, so to speak, here's creator Dana Simpson. I'm Dana, and this is my new book, Punk Rock Unicorn, which is Phoebe and Your Unicorn Book 17. And there's some stories in this book that really excite me. There's the one where Phoebe and Marigold meet Dark Phoebe and Marigold from an evil dark dimension, and they turn out maybe not to be as evil as anticipated, and Phoebe and Marigold are a little disappointed. There's the story where Phoebe plays a unicorn in a school play and is coached and maybe a little bit overcoached by Marigold. And there's the title storyline, which is one where Phoebe goes to music camp in the summer. Now, I went to music camp in the summer. I was a music camp kid, but I didn't get to take a unicorn to music camp. And I certainly didn't get to start a punk band with my unicorn called Sparkling Destruction. So I've taken some happy memories from my own childhood and made them even more sparkling and magical and weird. From best-selling author Lincoln Purse comes a new collection of Big Nate comics. Volume 28 of the Big Nate graphic novel series, Big Nate Nailed It, releases on February 28. 
When everyone's favorite prankster in PS38's record detention slip holder, Nate, goes on an unlucky streak, he seeks out a new good luck charm. Now, from winning games to getting a date with the captain of the cheer squad, Nate Wright can't seem to lose. Of course, all good streaks must eventually come to an end. In this book, Nate also has to deal with finding the class gerbil that he himself let loose, running his new couples counseling business, and, perhaps toughest of all, being nice to Gina for a whole week. With all the hilarity readers are accustomed to in Big Nate titles, Big Nate Nailed It is sure to nail it with readers when it releases later this winter. Also from the world of Big Nate is book three in the TV tie-in series. Big Nate Next Stop Superstardom releases on May 30. Nate Wright and his Fear the Mollusk bandmates are destined to become superstars. At least, that may be true if it weren't for Nate's atrocious singing. When his rival Artur is offered the job as new lead singer, Will Nate be able to put away his ego long enough to let someone else be lead, or will the band come crashing down during their big wedding day gig? This book features artwork and stories from three different episodes of the Big Nate TV series, and features all the witty, laugh-out-loud humor fans of the show and fans of the classic comics come back for again and again. Get your bags packed for family vacation with the Bright family on March 28th. That's right, the Brights are back in their second out-of-this-world graphic novel for middle grade readers created by Gabe Soria and Rafa Ribs. After searching for each other throughout the multiverse and repairing interdimensional portals, the Bright family is ready for vacation. But relaxing days, riding water slides, and eating space ramen are put on hold when the portal drops them deep in a jungle on an unknown planet. This is not the luxury resort they've booked. Not even close. Oh well, so much for chilling out. We love this series from Epic Originals because it blends otherworldly adventure with the ups and downs of everyday family life. And Epic always does a great job seamlessly weaving in lessons. In The Bright Family, Family Vacation, readers learn about conflict resolution, cooperation, and the importance of family in all of its forms, while also being wildly entertained. And on new collection of Heart and the City comics, we have Book Two, Lost and Found, publishing on April 4th. And we have Heart creator Steens here to talk about their book and what makes it special and inspiring for readers. Hi, my name is Steens and I write and illustrate Heart of the City. And that's one of my cats, Ripley. The second book, Lost and Found, a Heart of the City collection, releases soon. Heart of the City is such a fun series. You get heartwarming and relevant stories like a graphic novel mixed with the daily excitement of an ongoing comic strip. With an ongoing daily comic strip, I am always looking for ideas and situations for Heart and the gang to get into. I'm influenced by video games, movies, a meal I ate, or even silly interactions at the grocery store. No matter what, I try to find the funny in everyday activities. The secrets of Unicorn Island are all revealed in the third and final book of Epic's middle grade fantasy series. Unicorn Island Beyond the Portal comes out April 4th. Friends Sam and Tuck have finally discovered where to find the answers they've been looking for, but to get them, they have to pass through a mysterious portal. With no way of knowing what's in store for them, the kids in Barlock the Unicorn step through the portal and discover more than they bargained for. Sam finds her mom, but she's no longer a unicorn protector and this new world her mom lives in is plagued with problems. Even worse, Sam's mom is convinced that the only solution to this trouble rests in the horn on Barlock's head. With the portal closing at sundown on the third day, Sam and Tuck are in a race to rescue Barlock, reunite their families, and save the world from a terrible fate of its own making. This final Unicorn Island book will have readers biting their nails and stomping their hooves. Grab your shovel and pickaxe and dig into the fourth installment of the Diary of an 8-Bit Warrior graphic novel series. Battle for the Dragon appears on April 4th, with Runt and his crew preparing for an epic clash against Herobrine's evil army. They have no choice, because the fate of Runt's newest friend named Sweet Pea, who happens to be a baby dragon, well, Sweet Pea's fate is at stake. And any chance to succeed relies totally on Runt 
and his crew digging up some major courage to face this formidable enemy. We love this book series because it easily entices kids off their screens and into a book because they can continue to experience the mega popular world of Minecraft. Coming out May 16th, the Archibald Finch saga continues with another thrilling adventure. It's been months since our hero has returned home from the ancient lost world, and boy does he need a rest, but that's not going to happen because Archibald realizes something has followed him home and is now prowling through the suburbs of London. Now Archibald must return to the dark world for help. He is better prepared this time because he's a changed boy. He can now stand up to bullies and he hangs out with the gargoyles, golems, and witches that used to scare him. But still, he's just a boy embarking on a daring journey that will test him and each of his friends in different ways. In creating the Archibald Finch series, author Michel Guillon was inspired by ancient history. Here he is to tell you more. The story happens to be deeply rooted in history. In fact, it goes all the way back to witch hunting in the Middle Ages, to a time of great fears and superstitions. We're talking real events here, and at times, real life people, some of whom might surprise you greatly. My goal, as you might have guessed, was to write something deep and meaningful about the importance of tolerance, mainly, but also about the power of kindness and the true meaning of friendship. So, is the story a bit dark and scary at times? Yes, but it's also fun and captivating. On April 25th, Adventure Kingdom is back in business. In the second volume of this magical graphic novel series from Epic Originals, Clark and Caroline's plans to run a seemingly normal park are disrupted when a messenger from the real Adventure Kingdom comes through the portal looking for them. And before they know it, Grand Jerome, Eddie, and the kids are back in a world where magic is real and an old foe has developed a mesmerizing ability to control people's actions. To save Adventure Kingdom, the kids will have to face some hard choices about trust, friendship, and what it means to be a hero. Perfect for young fans of Stranger Things, this series delivers just the right amount of spookiness. And included in the book is a bonus Adventure Kingdom tale, an extra story outside the main plot line, an awesome surprise for readers to discover. Coming May 30th, New York Times bestselling author R.H. Sin returns for another glorious lullaby. The second storybook and follow-up to Dream My Child reveals the beauty of a child's imagination from the loving perspective of a parent watching their little one drift off into dreamland. Come Back to Me is a sweet exploration into sweet dreams that'll soothe and comfort little ones. So, wherever you go, whatever you dream, return in the morning, come back to me. And coming up next, is the next graphic novel in the Sorceline series appearing August 8th. Kids will love the lush, immersive artwork in this second installment. The first book left readers on the edge of their seats, and this sequel really delivers in backstory, beauty, and further intrigue. Return to the island of Vorn, where mythical creatures roam free, and only the brightest students are invited to study them. Follow along as the kids and creatures of Professor Balzar's famous school of cryptozoology unearth the long hidden secret at the heart of their story. Sorceline has proven herself a star student, but her gifts might have gotten the best of her. As Sorceline fights for her life, her classmates must work to uncover her origin story, revealing details of her past that may offer a key to their present. Included in the back of the book, readers will find behind-the-scenes bonus material. The action-packed graphic novel series The Witch's Throne races ahead with Volume 2 publishing June 13th. Optimistic young alchemist Agni continues her quest to become one of the four heroes destined to slay the witch, threatening her world. She finally makes it to the Citadel where the combat challenge is about to begin. Sizing up the other challengers, 
Agni wonders if winning is even possible. For more, we turn it over to the creator. Hello, my name is Cedric Cabales, and I'm the creator of the webcomic series, The Witch's Throne. Very soon, Volume 2 of The Witch's Throne will be released. It's the continuation of a series that I've been writing and drawing for for over five years now. This is a story that's very dear to me, that's been pieced together using all the interests and hobbies that I shared with my friends when I was a kid. This ranged from manga, to comics, to just plain old D&D &D and fantasy books. Every little thing that hooked our attention from when we were middle schoolers to college freshmen, I used as inspiration to craft a story that I know the past me would have adored. Volume 2 in particular includes some of my favorite fight scenes and character introductions that I can't wait for people to read in print for the first time. Thank you very much for joining Andrews McMill Kids. We appreciate your time and interest. To stay informed with everything Andrews McMill Kids, sign up for our newsletter. We'll also include that link in the next email. Again, thank you, and it was great to have you with us.